What's up guys, tell me if this sounds familiar. So you recently picked up a camera and was like, holy crap, I love this video thing, but I'm not really sure where to start, even what I should be doing right or what's wrong. Well, guess what? This whole video is just for you. Ready? Intro. What's up guys, Brandon Washington here. And like I said before, in this video, we are going to be primarily looking at some filmmaking 101 things for beginners. Now, if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button because this channel is all about filmmaking, gear, tips, tutorials, tricks, all that great stuff. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're definitely gonna wanna hit that subscribe button. But as I mentioned before, in this video, we're gonna be looking at some of the filmmaking 101s. Now, I know when you first get into filmmaking, which I did about seven years ago, gosh, that makes me feel old. When I first got into filmmaking, the hardest thing for me was not knowing what I don't know. So I hope that makes sense. So like, for example, there's certain things when you're first getting started that you don't know that you don't know. So then you don't know how to even go look for it or that you need to go look for it. And so that becomes like this huge issue, this huge ordeal. Uh, and so you look at all these other filmmakers and you're like, wow, I love what they're doing, but I don't even know what to call what they're doing. So I don't even know how to learn it or try to research it. So this is all about some of those basic one-on-one -on -one things that filmmakers are doing and things that you need to kind of know when you're first getting started. Now, before we jump into it, first thing I want to say is please excuse my voice. I've been a little sick, but I have committed to putting out videos consistently, which this is actually my third one this week. Super proud of that. First time I've ever done that. But I uh, still wanted to get this video out, so hopefully you guys can understand me. Second thing, obviously we can't cover every little detail every filmmaker needs to know, but I want you guys to know that today I'm actually releasing my first ever ebook, so I'll have links to that in the description. And a lot of the things I'm gonna talk to you guys about in this video will also be in that ebook with a lot more, so definitely check out that ebook because it is going to be a huge help for all you beginning filmmakers. And the third thing before we start is remember that when it comes to filmmaking that there are rules, but there's no such thing as rules. So what I mean by that is there are certain things that as a filmmaker, you are going to want to know as the rule. However, you're pretty much going to learn eventually that those rules can be broken for certain situations, but it is important to know some of those basic details. So that way, if you ever find yourself on set with another filmmaker, or someone's looking for someone to come help them shoot, you can at least know the bare minimum. So that way, if they mention it, you don't stand there looking like an idiot and you don't feel like you're wasting their time. So yeah, I've never done that before, ever. I did it once. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into some of the basic filmmaking stuff. All right, so the very first thing as a filmmaker you want to really get a good grasp on is your camera settings. Uh, no matter what happens when you're out shooting, it is most important to understand your camera. Uh, your camera, honestly, is probably gonna work a whole lot like 90% of the cameras out there because pretty much when it comes to cameras, there are four main things every filmmaker needs to know. Frames per second, shutter speed, ISO, aperture. Those are the four, one more time. That is frames per second, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Those four things are the main contributors to how your footage will look and how you choose to use these four are going to determine what your footage looks like. Now, the reason why I think this is the number one most important thing is because if you don't understand how to balance these four things properly, your footage will never look the way you want it to look unless you do it by accident, which I've seen people do that by accident. But it is important to understand these. Now, there are some general rules of thumb, like for example, you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate and you don't want your ISO to get too high or else it gets noisy. Uh, and you know, the higher your aperture is, the more stuff that's in focus, but the lower the number it is and the more of a blurry background you get. So there's a lot of little details in that and a lot of that I cover in my book, but 
it is important to understand that these four things are the most important things when it comes to being a filmmaker and understanding your camera because you have to know how these four things work because if you are ever on set with someone and you guys are shooting a two camera setup or even if he just has you DPing, by the way DPing means being the director of photography, it's very important for you to understand how these things work and to kind of get the look that your director or even you are trying to get out of your videos. All right, so the next thing is learning about stabilization. The very first kind of easy way to tell that someone is a beginner is they have crazy shaky footage. It's just not stable. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look polished or, you know, it just doesn't look right. So the easiest way to tell that someone is a beginner is they're not using stabilization. Now, I know a lot of people, when they think about stabilizing, they think about gimbals, Ronins, cranes, the DJI Ronin S, all those great little gimbals, which are awesome, but those are not the only forms of stabilization. You also have tripods. You also have jibs, you have sliders. There are a lot of different types of stabilization out there. And so it is important for you to use something. Now, if you're just using a tripod, you can get some amazing shots just out of a tripod. And you know, a tripod can go a long way on set, but it is important for you to be using something. You don't wanna have crazy shaky footage unless you're shooting the Hunger Games. That's pretty much the only time I think that was ever even an option. And even then, I personally got a little nauseous watching some of those scenes. All right, so the third thing that I wanna jump into with filmmaking, and that is some of the things that make the biggest difference in your films are things that you do not see. So what I mean by that are things like lighting and things like audio. Audio and lighting are, again, one area where beginning filmmakers don't pay that close attention and they make a huge kind of mistake. I mean, personally, I've been doing filmmaking as a career now for a little over three years. I've actually quit my full-time job and this is all I do. And I really am just now learning lighting. I mean, as crazy as that may sound, um, lighting is something that I personally didn't think was very important. I didn't really pay that much attention to it. But now as I'm starting to learn how to use it and I'm actually starting to like experiment with lighting, I've learned that lighting is a huge key to being able to tell if something is professional or not. I mean, using the wrong light can, can definitely ruin it or not using light at all and jacking up your ISO and having grainy footage can definitely ruin a shoot in a heartbeat. So learning lighting is something that you definitely wanna do. And also audio. Audio again is key and it's not always just the way you capture audio. Like for example, right now, I'm using a lavalier setup. That's why you can see the microphone right here. But also think of sound effects. Think of other elements that you can bring your whole story to life with and really learning sound design in your editing. So that is kind of the next thing that you really wanna be thinking about. Think about things that go beyond the camera, like lighting and sound. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna jump into is editing. Now, when it comes to editing, this is pretty much where you can almost camouflage your mistakes. Now, obviously every filmmaker's goal is to go out there and shoot and make the best video possible. However, sometimes we just mess up on a shot. Sometimes we miss focus. Sometimes our pacing isn't right. Sometimes something just doesn't look good. And editing is where you can kind of pretty much hide this. Now, if you get really good at editing, you can make some pretty bad footage look pretty good. Obviously, that's not the goal here. But learning how to really understand your editing suite is crucial. Now, I get this question all the time. What should you use? Should you use After Effects or should you use Premiere or should you use Final Cut? You know, all of them have their places. I mean, personally, I edit a lot of my work in Final Cut, but I also edit some stuff in Premiere. And then, of course, whenever it calls time for it, I use After Effects. But it is super important to remember that it is great practice to actually use your software as much as you can. Don't just use it for what your project needs. Think outside the box, figure out how to do new things with it because when you really learn what your editor can do, you can start getting crazy creative in your shooting process because you know what's possible in the editing. So take some classes, look online, look on YouTube videos, whatever you gotta do, really learn your editor because it can save even some really bad footage so that way you're not wasting anything everything is usable all right and the very last thing i want to jump into is you have got to practice 
I mean, obviously, when you are a beginning filmmaker, you get really excited. And you're like, oh my gosh, I want to make videos. I want to make videos. So you call your friends. You call everybody you know. And nobody wants to help you because, unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it works. So what I tell most beginning filmmakers to do is go find other filmmakers. I mean, look up your local hashtag, you know, hashtag, in my case, it may be hashtag Houston videographer or hashtag Los Angeles videographer or, you know, wherever you are, look up that hashtag so you can know exactly the people around you who are into what you're trying to do and DM them, reach out, try to get out and shoot with them, make cool content with each other because what it's going to help you do is to get out and learn what you can do and what you can create. And in this whole process, you are going to learn so, so much more than you would just sitting down looking at YouTube videos all day, which by the way, finish watching this video. I appreciate it. Thanks. But um, the awesome thing is that you need to get out there and practice. You've got to practice. You've got to shoot more. You've got to keep creating because in that process is when you're going to start to discover your style. You're going to start to discover what is possible. You're going to start to discover who you are as a filmmaker and you also discover if you actually really enjoy the whole process because I know a lot of filmmakers who love the shooting process but they hate the editing process or vice versa. So you'll learn those things through the practicing process. So I said process like at least six or seven times. But yeah, in that whole process, you will learn what it is that you ultimately will end up doing in this film world. All right, so those are just a few of the things I wanted to touch on. Now, obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I do have my book. It is out now officially, so links down in the description to that. And let me know what you guys think about it. Also, one really interesting thing that I tried to do for you guys is I also get a lot of questions as far as recommendations. So when I'm talking about cameras in the book, I'm actually going to tell you guys my recommendation as far as cameras. Now, don't don't worry. They're all not Canon, even though I'm a huge Canon fan. I did recommend some Sony stuff. I did recommend some Panasonic stuff. So in each chapter, there is a section devoted towards recommendations. So if you guys want to know what gear I'm personally using or what gear I personally think is a good piece of gear for you guys, all of that is located in this book. This whole book was written with you guys in mind. I basically took all the questions that I've been getting over on my Instagram, here on my YouTube, and I compiled all that together into this ebook so that way I could make this for you guys. I hope you guys really enjoy this. If you guys enjoy it, let me know. Leave me comments on this video or shoot me over an email or something. That way I can know if you guys enjoyed it. Also, if there are things that are not in this book that you want to know, let me know because I enjoyed making this book. It was an awesome process and I do plan on making more. So let me know what things you guys want to know so I can add those into future ebooks and I'll continue to pump out this type of content for you guys. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you thought it was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the filmmaking process. And of course, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Wow, I can't believe it. Three videos in one week. I'm basically a YouTuber now. Just kidding.